there is this wrestler fighter, and his name is Hulk Hogan. I'm not too sure whether some of us have heard his name before, but those of us who follow wrestling, we know this man. This man is so powerful, very strong. He's able to defeat his enemies in the ring. But there was something that happened to him. All of a sudden, things started going from bad to worse for him. All of a sudden, he lost his wife. He got divorced. Secondly, his children betrayed him. And thirdly, because of his psychological problems, he was being defeated in the ring. Now, he got to a point that he got so confused, not knowing what to do. Now, what came to his mind was one thing, that I have come to the end of my life. At the end of the day, what am I looking living for? Therefore, I need to take my life. In the course of pondering over this and in the act of doing, there was a phone call that came through. He didn't know who was calling, and at that particular time when he was about to take his own life, and when the call came through, he was a friend. And the friend said, Hulk, how are you doing today? There is something that I want to tell you. I don't know what you are going through, but there is something that I want to share with you. That there have been people in this world who have been less privileged than you. There are people in this world who do not have the opportunities that you have in this world. Therefore, when we talk about the structural standards of people in life, you stand up there. Therefore, everything that you are going through, know that very soon. It is coming to an end. And as soon as this man said that to Hulk, he put the phone down. And then he sat down and said, My God, this man didn't know what I was going to do to myself. And he called me just as at the time that I was about to take my own life into my own hands. He shared a word with me. And that word actually has given me hope. I lost hope, but this phone call gave me that hope. And that means I have to stop going ahead with whatever I plan doing. And from there on, his life turned around. And now, by God's grace, he is who he is. What am I talking about today? The message I'm talking about today, I have captioned this, share the good news. Share the good news. Wherever we are, we must not be hesitant in sharing the good news. When we talk about good news, what do we mean? The news that will take us unto God. Salvation news that will help us in order to achieve heaven. I'm sorry, if we are here just to see me, I'm sorry then you are in the wrong place because you are not here to see me. We are here to listen to the word of the Lord. That is sharper than the two air sword. Uh, the word of the Lord uh, that continues to be the lamp on our feet and the light onto our path. Uh, the word of the Lord that gives what life. Uh, that is what we are here to, to, to hear. So that when we hear it, uh, it continues to boost us. Uh, it heals all our diseases. Uh, it energizes us. It goes out with us. Uh, wherever we go, even when doors are shut, uh, when we hear the word of the Lord, uh, it carries us. Uh, not only carries us. But it catapults us to a place where we are not meant to be. But because we have been here to hear the word of God, it propels us, it multiplies us, it adds to us in every area of our life. If you are sitting here and you're not feeling good, if you are sitting here and you are sick, hearing the word of the Lord alone heals you. That is why the name of the Lord is called Jehovah Rapha, because he's our healer. He's able to heal, and his word will heal you. So that if you have to share any good news, uh, do not be hesitant uh, to share the life of God to other people in this world. At that point in Hogan's life, if you have not heard the good news, that would have been the end of it. 
Shall we open our Bibles, please? To Second Kings, verse seven. Second Kings, seven. Second Kings, seven. Second Kings, seven. Seven. Yes. That is from verse one. Yeah. Then Elisha said. Here then hold on. Then Elisha said, Go. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. That said the Lord. And this is what the Lord, the omnipotent, is saying. Tomorrow, about this time. Hold on. He says, Elisha is speaking to a servant sent through by the kingdom of Israel. There was this case of the Assyrians besieging the Samarians. And as a result of that, all the what? The food flow cut off from Israel. So there was a great famine going on in Israel. Now, there were things happening and there was no food in the house. So what happened was that the king of Israel swore to himself and said that tomorrow by this time, if the man of God, who was Elisha, had his head on, then he shouldn't be called the king. So he sent his servant to question him and to grab him so that he will capture Elisha and got his head was chopped off. But as soon as the servant got there, Elisha called him in. And Elisha said, say that again, read that again. He said to me, tomorrow. And he said to him, even though before he could say whatever the king has asked him to say, he didn't let him talk. But what did he say? He said, so, tomorrow about this time. Even tomorrow about this time, even though they have been farming for so long, even though people are not able to get food to eat, even though people started eating their own children, but it has been ongoing for so long. And how did this happen? It happened because the Israelites almost ceased for God to be their God. They decided to do their own thing, and so the anger of God fell on them. And if, can somebody open Deuteronomy 28, please? And read from 20. That was exactly what happened. You hold on. Somebody open Deuteronomy 28. I want you to get the background of what we are about to talk about. The 20, yes. The Lord shall send upon thee. He says, because the Israelites stood against God and did not regard God as their God and were disobedient to God, this is what they were going through. Start again, Pastor. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing. The Lord shall send upon what? Thee. Upon thee, the Israelites, cursing, cursing, vexation, vexation, and rebuke, and rebuke, in all that, in all that, thou settest thy hand on to, and everything that you set your hand on. So, because you have refused, God bless you, to accept God for being your God, there is curse on you. So, because of the curse on the Israelites, it resulted to that there was famine in the land of Israel. Now, as a result of that, the king sent his servant to Elisha to ask why and to capture him because he thought that it was the doing of Elisha. So before, as soon as he got there, this is what Elisha said to him, go. It's tomorrow about this time. And Elisha told him that tomorrow around this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. A measure of a fine flour that you can't afford to buy, very expensive, but it has been ongoing because there is famine. But tomorrow around this time, a measure of fine flour shall shall be shall cost for, so for a shall be sold for what? A shekel like a peswa. Go. And two measures of barley. And two what? measures of barley of what? For a shekel. For also a shekel. God bless you, hold on. So as soon as we got there. Elisha told him the good news. That with all the troubles, with all the tribulation, with all the famine, I want to tell you that tomorrow, 
there must be a change. Amen. It is my prayer for you today. That it doesn't matter how you're looking at yourself today. It doesn't matter what you're going through today. It doesn't matter the trials and the tribulations you're going through today. Elisha is speaking to you. Tomorrow at this time, your destination has changed. Amen. Tomorrow at this time, you have been healed. Amen. Tomorrow at this time, all your hard desires have been met. Tomorrow at this time, everything that you're looking for in this world has come into fulfillment. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says God uh, at the gate of God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, at the gate of God. <laughs> then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, And then, because the man who the king sent didn't have any faith, because he didn't have any faith, he seemed not to have believed any word that came from Elisha. That how come that they have been farming for so long? For ages and ages, and as I go here today, you are telling me that things are going to start changing from tomorrow. It can never be possible. Go on. Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven. He says, irrespective of what you have said, even if the Lord will make the windows of heaven open, go on. Might this thing be? Can this be possible? No. Go on. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with an eyes, but shall not eat thereof. That's right. This is a sheer display of unbelief. It's like you're sitting down here, you're having some sickness in you, and the man of God is telling you that tomorrow by this time, you never feel any pain. And you're sitting down here telling me, if, if God is God, it can never be possible. Mm. So this was a sheer display of unbelief. And when you display unbelief, you have the effect. And then Elisha said to him, because of your unbelief, your eyes will say, but you can never enjoy the richness of God. I want to tell you today, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Do not let your faith be shaking. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Do not ever have any second thought about God. God has not forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about your name. God knows your destiny. He knows your beginning from your end. The Bible says before you were formed, He knew you. Therefore, God has known you. He has not forgotten about you. Everything you see now, they are all temporal. At the appointed time, He will glorify Himself in your life. Do not let your present situation take you out of the love of God. Paul says, what can take me away from the love of God? There is nothing that can take me away from the love of God. Amen. God. If we say, uh, yeah, it says, uh, and there were four lepers. Now, at the entering, because of what happened, you know leprosy. At that age, if you are a leper, you do not or we don't count you as humans. So we always make sure that you are exterminated. Meaning that if you are a leper, if you have leprosy, they have a place for you. You don't belong to human beings. So as this was going on, there were these four lepers. In fact, they were disgraced because of their sickness. In fact, they themselves knew that they were not up to anything. So because they have been thrown out, there was something that came into their, 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 their minds, about four of them, and let's listen to what they did. And there were four leprous men at the entry. And there were four leprous men at the entry of the gate. So they had been exterminated out there. And so, they said one to another. And then, because they have been sent out there, they know that they don't have much chance to live. Therefore, they decided to risk their lives, uh, if they work, they work, uh, if it doesn't work and they die, they die. Go. Why sit we here until we die? Why sit we here? Why are we sitting here until we die? Even though we know that no matter what, we are going to die anyway. But then why are we sitting here? Why don't we make a move? Uh? Why don't we make a step? Uh? Why don't we move forward? Uh? Mm. In life, there are times we feel so comfortable at where we are. And it is very dangerous. I want to tell you that the blessings that the Lord has for you, you have not even experienced even one day. Therefore, if you are 
so comfortable at where you are, I want to tell you that that is not God, what God has orchestrated for you. God wants you to move higher and higher. Therefore, instead of sitting down idly, I want you to be like this Paul Lepesa. They knew that no matter what, they would die anyway. But why should they sit down there and die? Why don't they make a move? Why don't they risk their lives? I want you to know that life is full of risk. Sometimes if you don't risk, you can never win. Sometimes if you don't risk, you can never succeed. But if you risk, you have the chance of losing. If you risk, you have the chance of succeeding. But why don't you take the risk? Because when you take the risk, God is with you. As your father is God, God will be with you. God will guide you. God will protect you. He will make a way. Where there is no way, God will make you to succeed. So the Bible says that the leopard, the leopard is decided to make a move. Go. If we say we will enter into the city, and if the famine is in the city, and then, the what? then the famine is in the city. If we say we are going to move into the city, there is famine there. There is no food there. Anyway, we are so bound to die. Go. And shall die there. And we shall die there because there is no food for me to, for, for them to eat. And if we sit back still here, if we, we sit still also. there, we die also. But if they continue to sit there, they will also die. If they move, they will die. If they sit, they will die. Go. On. Now therefore, come and let us fall onto the floor. And so they regroup themselves. And what did they do? Now, therefore, come and let us fall onto the host of the Syrians. So, the root of themselves, okay? The Syrians have food. They have everything. Let us make that step of faith. Go to them and surrender ourselves to them. If they kill us, we die. If they spare us, we live. If they save us, if they save us alive, we shall live. And Amen. if they kill us, we shall but die. Amen. Amen. Go. And they rose up in the twilight. And the, the Bible says, and they rose up in the twilight, in the evening, and went there. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Good. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses. Hallelujah. A noise of a great Hallelujah. Horse. And they said, God bless you. Another, God bless you. You see, they said, if we sit down, we will die. If we sit down, we will die. If we move on, we will die. Therefore, we will go and surrender to the what? The Syrians. The Bible says, and when these four lepers go to the entrance, God changed the situation. And he ordered what? Uh, of noises of, noises of chariots. And noises of horses. And noises of horses. And noises of a great host. And the noise of a great host. So he orchestrated it so that he put fear into the Syrians. The Assyrians. And when they heard the footsteps of the lepers, God changed their footsteps like chariots and horses. So the Assyrians thought that there were horses and chariots coming after them. Yeah. So they fled. Amen. I pray for you Jesus. that God will change your footsteps. Amen. I said God will change your footsteps. Amen. He will put chariots and horses against your enemies. Amen. Your enemies will come to you in some way. But they will fly away in some way. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If God decided that to change the lap the, the, the footsteps of the lepers uh, and the Assyrians are including their kings uh, they fled uh, and left everything that they had. What can God do for us? He is able more than able to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able more than ever, he can handle anything that comes my way. 